Okay, this is the Unit 5 test, and these are questions 11 through 14. And people seem to do pretty well with this Unit 5 test. Exponents don't seem to be a problem. Uh, we did have very good results on this. Very few questions. Um, we spiraled in, of course, some questions from some previous units. Those were handled pretty well for the most part, too. Um, question number 11 is a spiraled in question. It's an inequality. And it deals with a rational expression, and it deals with the virtual tools, which people had uh, found problematic in uh, previous weeks. But this week seemed to go pretty well for almost everybody, which is, which is good news because uh, that'll serve you well in the fall. Um, as you look at this question, and I uh, mentioned with inequalities, sometimes it's handier to instead of worrying about the inequality. Just think of it as equality for a moment. Okay, so think of it as 2x minus 3 over x plus 1 equals 1. Now, again, number 1 for me, uh, I think it should be for you, you want to avoid undefined expressions. So I want to say that x cannot be negative 1. Now, again, going back to the inequality, this is less than or equal to. So normally on your number line, right, you think about filling in dots or making square brackets. And so you're not going to be able to uh, to do that in the case of the number negative 1. All right, that number is excluded from our domain. All right, and we say that right at the outset. Now from here, I'm going to treat it as if it's a proportion and cross multiply. Okay, and get 2x minus 3 equals x plus 1. And from there, pretty simple, x is 4. Okay, fine and good. So you go to your number line now with that equality 4. But also being mindful of this negative 1 back here. So I'm going to load up my number line with a negative 1 and with a 4. All right. Now the 4 is allowed, right? We have on the original expression, it's an inequality, and we have a line under there, right, which indicates equal. So x can be that 4 right there. That's allowed. So I'm going to shade that in. But I'm again going to say the negative 1, right? The interest in the number negative 1 was caused by division by 0 expression if x is negative 1. And even though you have that equality, that negative 1 cannot be shaded in. All right? So we have a situation where uh, one of our interest points is shaded and the other uh, point of interest is not shaded. And now what we've suggested you do, because it mocks a procedure we use in the calculus, is to just test these intervals. So right in here between negative 1 and 4, I'm going to test x equals 0. And I put it in the original expression. So every time I see an x, I put in a 0. And the question I'm asking is, is that less than or equal to uh, 1? And of course, 2 times 0 is 0, so that's a minus 3. And the denominator becomes a 1. And so overall, I have negative 3 is less than or equal to 1. And the, I'm questioning that. I'm saying, is that true? I'm checking that. And of course, that's true. That ends up being a yes. So numbers in this region, from negative 1 to 4, are acceptable. They work. They will check in the given inequality. Right? Now, if you go to a number like 5, number bigger than 4, number up in this interval, you're going to have 2 times 5 minus 3 over 5 plus 1. And we're saying, is that less than or equal to 1? Well, that gives us 10 minus 3 over 5 plus 1. Well, 5 plus 1 is 6. And is that less than or equal to 1? Which gives us 7 over 6. Less than, equal to 1. Is it true? Well, pretty obviously, 7 over 6 is bigger than 1. So this is a false condition that's resulted. That is not true. 
So numbers above 4 will not work. Numbers bigger than 4 will not work. And if we test a number down here, like say a negative 2, we uh, again follow the same procedure, replace the variable by the test number, and then ask yourself, does it work? Does it check? And so that gives us negative 4 minus 3 over negative 1 less than or equal to 1. That gives us negative 7. Negative 1 less than or equal to 1 is 7. Less than or equal to 1. False condition, right? Pretty obviously false. Is 7. That's it. You're, you're putting is 7 less than or equal to 1. That's false. That's a no. So numbers down there won't work. You then had to go to the virtual tools, and, and this virtual tools is an active for me right here, so I can't uh, demonstrate it for you. Uh, if there's people still having trouble, let us know. We can we can show you how this operates. Um, what happens is you're going to put an open circle or a parenthesis at negative 1. You're going to be putting in a closed circle at 4. And then you're going to click in between there uh, with the draw tool. And what it's going to do is it's going to shade this whole region for you. And that would have been your solution on, uh, on question number 11. So inequality is still a little, that was probably the most missed question. A lot of people uh, left out the negative one. Uh, different things happened to them. So... Uh, be careful. Take a look at our technique if you're having trouble with that. And uh, before too long, you'll find them easy. All right. Uh, question 12, question 13, jump back to the exponent rules. And so I'll just slide these up to where we can see them and get back to my pencil. Uh, number 12 does mean this. 8x to the 6 to the negative two-thirds power. And again, the formatting was an issue, and we're going to work with WebAssign see if we can't fix that up for uh, the next version of this uh, program that comes out. Um, you have a negative exponent right here. We're going to handle that negative exponent first. We don't actually have to, but I'm going to take care of that first. Moving the entire uh, expression 8x to the 6th to the denominator and changing the sign of the exponent. Now notice the sign of the exponents in the uh, base expression didn't change, right? That's still a positive 6. This is still 8 to the first power, right? So only that negative 2 thirds changed to a positive 2 thirds. Now, we'll also remind you of what this two-thirds exponent means. If you wrote it out in radical notation, this would mean cube root of 8x to the 6, and then take that result and square it. All right? Before I do that, I'm going to use the power to a power rule. This, this would certainly be true, right? This would be the bottom is your root. So it's a cube root. Top is the power. Typically, you do the, the root first and then apply the power. But instead of doing that, what I'm going to do is raise the power to the power. Okay, so I'm going to take it a different way and treat it as 1 over 8 to the 2 thirds times x to the 6 times two-thirds is four. So instead of writing it in the radical, and you could do it this way. Some people would see it easier this way, I suppose. Uh, but I'm going to use the power to a power rule. And one times two-thirds is two-thirds. And six times two-thirds is 12-thirds, which turns out to be a four. Now, right here, eight to the two-thirds power. 8 to the 2 thirds power is 4. Okay? 8 to the 2 thirds power. I'm saying that's a 4 because you're talking about the cube root of 8 
and then taking that result and squaring it. Well, the cube root of 8 is a 2. And if you square 2, you get 4. So the answer we we're looking for there on question 12 was 1 over 4x to the 4th. Uh, similar technique here on uh, number 13. Again, the formatting an issue. A few people wrote to us and asked us to, if those were exponents or multipliers, and it was intended to be an exponent. Most people believed it was an exponent. We just had to confirm that for them. So what we're talking about here is 4x to the 6th, y to the 8, to the 3 halves power. Well, just as I did in the previous one, I'm going to use my power to a power rule. So I'm going to have 4 to the 3 halves, x to the ninth. Right, because 6 times 3 is 18, divided by the 2 is going to be 9. And y to the 12th. Okay. So my x and y terms are good. The 4 to the 3 halves, you probably wouldn't leave like that, right? Because this term can be simplified. Uh, the 3 halves power means square root cubed. Right? So the square root of 4 is 2 cubed is going to be an 8. So the final answer we're looking for there is 8x to the 9th, y to the 12th. Like that, right? And if you want to see this again, this means square root of 4. The denominator of the exponent is the root. And then you're supposed to cube that result. Right? Then you do the power. The square root of 4 is the number 2, and 2 cubed is 8. So on that one, we're looking for 8, x to the 9th, y to the 12th. All right. Um, last one here, only 14 uh, exercises on this on this unit test. A little difficult to read, so I'll, I'll blow up question number 14. It says uh, a over b minus b over a over 1 over a minus 1 over b. And that was kind of small to read, so probably a good idea to blow up. It's called a complex fraction. Okay, You might, some places here, refer to as a compound fraction. Okay. Um, Typically, what you want to do here, technique, is uh, to multiply by all denominators that you see in the exercise. Okay, a couple ways you can do them. Uh, I see a denominator of a, and I see a denominator of b. So on the major fraction, I would multiply by a, b. And again, both numerator and denominator, so I'm multiplying by one. Now, when you do that multiplication, right? And this AB gets multiplied over here. The B is going to cancel the B, and so you're going to be left with an A squared. Okay. The AB times the second term minus B over A. You're going to cancel the A's on that second multiplication, and you're going to have minus B squared. And... Then in the denominator, same idea. The AB is going to be multiplied through there. And the A is going to cancel on the first term. And so you're going to be left with just a B. And the AB times the 1 over B, the Bs will cancel here and here. And so you'll have a B minus A. All right. And now looking at that numerator, you should see a difference of squares, so it's going to factor into a conjugate pair of a minus b and a plus b. And then our denominator is a b minus a. And as you look at these, the a minus b, we mentioned this already once in this test, and the b minus a are signed opposites, right? a is positive, a is negative. 
B is negative, B is positive. So the A minus B and the B minus A absolutely, in terms of absolute value, would have the same value. So we can actually cancel them. But instead of canceling uh, for a factor of 1, we're actually canceling and leaving a factor of minus 1. So there's a variety of answers that could have uh, flown out of uh, question 14. You might have left it as minus a plus b, right? Leave it again, that factor of negative 1 multiplied times this a plus b expression. You may have distributed that and had minus a minus b. Okay. Um, of course, the order could be reversed. This could have had uh, negative b plus a somehow, or perhaps negative b minus a might have been what came out of your answer. So there's a variety of answers that checks for it. Um, could be anticipated. So uh, that is unit test uh, five. And uh, we hope you found these things helpful. But as always, if you uh, need more assistance with some of the topics or some of the questions, uh, just get a hold of us and let us know.